In this video, I'm gonna fix this. I had a little whoopsie when I took off the door and that's gonna bother me forever. So now, we're gonna fix it. We're gonna do it right now. You may or may not know that this little thing right here is incredibly easy to fix if you use the right materials. What I'm gonna use is Bondo for wood. The reason I'm gonna use this it's a whole big can for this little tiny thing. I have a ton of other stuff in my house that I can use this for, and you could probably get something smaller than this. You can use whatever you want. I would just suggest not to use like a spackle or any kind of regular wood filler because it's not strong enough for something like this. Because this is on the corner right here, you're gonna want something that's gonna be able to stand the test of time. And if you just use regular spackling, even if you just brush it like this, it's gonna fall apart. So that's why I'm gonna use this stuff. I love this stuff and I'm not sponsored by Bondo, just so you know. I'm gonna use some 80 grit sandpaper. I cut it into a triangle. I thought that might make this easier. And all I wanna do is just rough up this surface a little bit on the paint, on the outside and right here. This is just going to rough up the surface to give the Bondo something better to adhere to. It'll just stick better. Yeah, something like that. You're going to make it worse before you make it better. So don't worry if it looks like that. Do the same thing right here. You could use a little wood block if you needed to, but that's great. Nice and roughed up. So now we take the top off of here. This is a two part process. So this is the hardener for the Bondo. I have a piece preferably of plastic or if you use like wood or something like that to mix this stuff on, try and cover it in plastic because the wood will actually absorb some of this and not give you a perfect mix. Now I don't need a ton of this and this process will be the same for bigger or smaller uh, little nicks that you have or I've done some wonderful things with this stuff, to be honest with you. So you can see that this is a little watery. So I'm gonna mix it up just a little bit. Be forewarned, it is a little stinky. Not the worst thing ever, but it should probably work in a well-ventilated area. Okay, that's mixed up a little bit. Now I'm gonna mix up this a little bit because the same thing happens in here. You just can't see it. Okay, now I'm just gonna take a little bit of the Bondo. I really don't need a lot, but even something like that. And you add the hardener. The directions on the can actually say to remove a three inch diameter circle by half inch, and then to use a three inch strip or bead of the hardener across that three inch diameter circle. So that's the amount that it tells you to use. But for this, I'm just gonna use this little tiny drop. If you add too much of this, uh, you won't be able to really stain this and make it look good because this is stainable, but with the hardener, it kind of turns this green. If you put too much, you might be okay with this. But we're gonna be painting it anyways, so not a big deal. The working time for this is about three to five minutes, so only mix up as much as you're gonna be using in that time. Okay, that should be good. I'm gonna take some of this Bondo and go over to the door. Now I'm gonna carefully try and fill in that corner. What I like to do is overfill the area plenty, so that way I can just sand it off and I might be able to get away with one coat here. You will make a mess with this, I guarantee it. I'm just making sure that the original spot is full. So now I'm gonna let that cure. It's gonna take between 15 minutes and a half an hour depending on how much hardener you put in the mix. So this has dried for about 15 minutes and it's still a little tacky. And at this point, what I like to do is grab a chisel and just start kind of scraping some of this excess off carefully. 
That way I don't have to do as much sanding. So I'll start up here where I know that I don't need any Bondo on this trim. The reason I do it when it's still tacky is because it will actually scrape off pretty easily. There it goes. See how it didn't stick very well there? That's why I wanted to sand this down because it came right off of that paint. So we're going to try and get it to do the same thing here. There we go. That's good for under there. Now right here, I'm just going to try and carefully go this way. corner. Some caulking. It's okay. Okay. It's pretty good. Now all this is cleaned up. Here and here. This is taken down a little bit. Now I'll have a lot less sanded to do. So I'll let that cure for another 20 minutes or so. All right, I think that's cured. I'm gonna use some 100 grit sandpaper. Just try and smooth this out. I'm just gonna be careful against the trim here. Try not to mess it up too much. Just go nice and easy. If you're sanding a big patch, if you're sanding anything really, you should be wearing a mask. Don't wanna breathe this stuff in. Try and get that nice and flat. This. Okay, and I can take a flashlight, hit it from the side here, get a better view of what it looks like. This is pretty good. I think I need to sand this a little more. It's kind of a hump right here, so I'm going to try and take that down. There we go. I'm going to use a fine sanding block to just try and clean up that trim, especially up here. Hit the whole thing nice and smooth. Check it with the light. I think once I caulk this in, prime it and paint it, I think it'll be good. You could do another coat around here, another thin coat if you really wanted to make this super perfect, but I think this is gonna be good. Add some caulking here. And this is what I'm gonna use for primer. This is Cover Stain by Zinser. Really good stuff. This is oil-based primer. So I'm going to use a throwaway brush and just hit that spot real quick with this. Looks good right there. With the light, trying to make it smooth. Cool. I'll let that dry before I hit it with trim paint. Primer's all nice and dry. So oh, I'm just gonna hit it real quick with a sanding sponge. Might help to make it a little smoother. Good. Now I'm just gonna touch this up with trim paint. So just try and match the paint that you have here. This is, I think it's ultra white, but also the sheen. So I used uh, high gloss on this trim. So I'm going to just hit the patch, and then if it doesn't match that great, on my second coat, I'll paint this entire one, this piece of trim and this piece of trim all the way across, and then that way it should blend in with this. Now the reason I'm talking about painting this whole piece of trim is no matter what, even if you use the same exact paint, what can happen over time is this could fade, and where you patch it in or touch it up, that could be 
a different sheen than this. But because of the way this trim is, I honestly don't think I'm gonna have an issue. But that's something to keep in mind because no matter what, even if you use the exact paint over time, the sheen changes and you could get what's called flashing where it looks like a different sheen or it, you can tell it's a patch by looking at a different angle depending on the lighting. It all depends on how fancy you wanna get, but I think this is gonna work out perfect. After two coats of paint, that looks awesome. In fact, can't even tell that it was ever there. So if you had to do something similar to this, I hope this video helps. And if you wanna see more videos like this, I have a ton on my channel. And if you haven't subscribed yet, definitely consider it for a ton more home repairs like this. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.